Hi, everyone. How you doing? Well, we've got the, uh, the envious after lunch slot, so mm. let's, let's try and keep everyone awake. Hope you're all nice and sleepy. Settle in. Exactly. Um, so welcome, everyone. We're, we've, got the, we've got the real pleasure of welcoming uh, Steve Huffman on here. Uh, Steve is the other founder of uh, uh, Reddit, not the famous one, so he can't get you tickets to Wimbledon. Uh, he's not the one that's married to Serena. It's the other one. I'm kidding. Uh, Steve, well, I mean, it's true. Everything well, you said it, is it, true. It's true. It's true. It's true. Uh, Steve, thank you for coming out here. Uh, it's such a pleasure to sort of uh, hang out with you again. Um, so let's get into it. I, I want to talk about your journey as someone who's gone from CTO to CEO, right? Like, you've, you've obviously learned a whole bunch of things. You've had some, some uh, uh, amazing peer mentors. But, but let's start with a journey of going from CTO to CEO. I, I've... I've experienced that a couple of times, and, and I'd love for you to tell the world you know, how that was like. Sure. So I've basically, in my career, had three jobs. <clears throat> the first was at what I call like Reddit One, when we founded Reddit, and, and that was through the first five years. And the largest Reddit One ever was was six people. So uh, in that role, um, I was programming every day, mm -hmm. although we didn't call me the CTO. Okay. Um, and it was also, uh, Alexis and I were setting the strategy, although neither of us called uh, ourselves the CEO. <clears throat> so I think in classic, classic like small startup land, we never figured out some like obvious things. Um, then I left in 2009 and started a company with a friend of mine called Hitmonk. That's right. And so Hitmonk was a travel search company. We were competing with Priceline and Kayak. Um, it's always been my dream to sling plane tickets to strangers. And uh, Adam was the CEO. And he was the guy who really loved travel. And actually, um, it was kind of an interesting company for me because I wanted to start a company with Adam. I wanted to start a company that had a business model that was obvious. Um, but I wasn't super into travel. Okay. Um, but I considered myself a professional. I'll do my best job that I can at this. And so our relationship was interesting because he was the CEO. He set the strategy. He dealt with the board. He dealt with investors. Um, and I got to do product and engineering. Amazing. And so I used to look at him and just think, his job sucks. <laughs> and I have my dream job. I get to basically do what I love. I get to do whatever I want. I get to build this product. I get to talk to engineers all day. It was a lot of fun. And so coming back to Reddit in 2015, uh, going from having a very, I think, relatively peaceful existence mm -hmm. to all of a sudden the CEO of a company that uh, many people are watching was, was quite a shift. And the, the downside was, is, is I no longer get to do uh, what has been my, my life passion, which is program. Right. Um, but I found actually a, a new passion, which is in management and leadership. And the, in, in, my, in my 20s, I used to read every programming blog, learn every language, play around with every framework, just code for fun uh, outside of work and on the weekends, basically constantly. And even though I still love programming and I still mm -hmm. love teaching people how to program, now I feel the same passion about management that I did about programming. Right. And if you had told me when I was 22 that I would spend my evenings thinking about our mission and values and strategy, I would have, I don't know, I would have jumped off a bridge. Um, but Been now there. I find that just as fulfilling and fun as I did programming 10 years ago. And, and so how has that you know, really changed um, in, the, in, the, in the 10 years? I mean, building a company you know, now is very different to building a company you know, back when we were building companies in 2005, 2006. That mm -hmm. was the, the wild, wild west, right? Like, you didn't have GDPR laws. You didn't have uh, the media furore around uh, content and, and the policing and the censorship. How is it different now? Well, I mean, you just, that, that's the answer. Um, there are new regulations. There's new expectations. The bar is higher. Um, when, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, uh, YouTube, uh, we all came alive within a couple of years of each other. And we are now facing, over the last couple of years and into the future, challenges that we weren't thinking about, you know, 14, 15 years ago. Right. And so not just the regulatory burden, but also I think just the societal burden of um, how do the things we build affect the world both positively and negatively. Mm -hmm. When we started Reddit, it was, a, it, was a, it was almost like a side project. It was like a homework assignment. Right. Um, I, I didn't think it would live beyond a, a few months. Yeah. And, and so not only is the burden on us great now, and, and I think justifiably so, right. 
Um, but getting a company off the ground in our space now would be very difficult, um, simply because the bar is that much higher. Okay, so let's, let's take a step back. Um, you know, the, the kind of mentorship that you've had over the years, could you, could you kind of describe it? Like, ha have you been a mentor? Have you had, like, you've had peer mentorship, right, from, from some pretty cool people, but could you just give us an idea of how you've experienced that? Sure, so one of the things that I feel most fortunate about is when I moved to San Francisco, uh, this was in 2006, uh, I moved with some of my closest friends. So uh, Emmett Shear and Justin Kahn, who are the, um, the founders of Justin TV, which would later turn into Twitch, um, which is you know, now a very large peer of ours uh, online. Um, in that same batch, uh, and we were in the first class of Y Combinator in 2005. Right. In that same batch was Sam Altman, who now runs Y Combinator, uh, Aaron Swartz, who would join us uh, at Reddit, and, and in San Francisco, I've had this uh, really great network mm -hmm. of, of founders, and we're all about the same age. We moved to San Francisco at the beginning of what we used to call Web 2.0. Yep. And so as, uh, as young people, uh, we all kind of made the transition from naively optimistic engineering founder yep. to uh, leaders of large companies. Uh, that peer group I'm very thankful for. So Emmett at, at Twitch, he and I used to be on uh, AIM, you know, AOL Instant <laughs> Messenger, for the old folks out there, yeah. uh, all day long. Right. And, and, and our problems uh, that, that we would talk about had, you know, it would increase in magnitude over the years. First it was, how do you install Postgres? Okay, how do you scale Postgres? Um, hey, have you hired anybody yet? Like, how do you hire somebody? Okay, uh, have you fired anybody yet? <laughs> um, and just the constant um, connection of, of learning challenges together. And right. so we, I think, learned a lot of lessons the hard way yeah. um, and then shared notes along the way. So that's probably the thing I'm the most thankful for is having uh, that group of people to, to learn together with. Amazing. So you basically had the founders of Airbnb, Dropbox, um, Stripe was Stripe. around there. Um, is, is that just ridiculous or is that, yeah, just by coincidence, all these guys just happen to get together and they're like, yeah, let's, let's build some cool products. Well, and how, a lot of us lived in the same apartment building. Oh, even better. So we even lived, better. there was um, 13 startups in the same apartment building in San Francisco. <laughs> and so it was like a dorm for, um, for companies. Right. Proper incubator. Okay. All right. Well. You're dealt the hand. You, know, you, you play the you play the, the hand that you're dealt. So, uh, so let's let's go into a little bit more about the uh, the kind of the ethics of you know entrepreneurship. And and you know I've obviously experienced this. Uh, I've I've written code that's used by most political parties in the world, and and some of that by far right parties. And and you know unintentionally I've made money from that. H how does that feel to you today? Like you know when you're taking when you took over the reins of, of Reddit again in 2015. What was that like? Because you know there, there were there'd been scandals, there had been concerns. You had you had the world's attention focused but, on, and, and, and that would be even understating it. Right. We spent years in the press, uh, not unfairly, for all of the wrong reasons. Mm. <clears throat> when I look back to when I was in college, uh, in the computer science department, which was in the engineering school uh, at University of Virginia, we would take ethics classes. And there's always this um, kind of a joke uh, that they would make in the computer science department, which is, well, you're not civil engineering, <laughs> right? Your bridges aren't gonna collapse, and you're not mechanical engineers, like your planes aren't gonna fall out of the sky. And we took a class on software design um, where we studied the, the software of the uh, A-10 bomber. And they're like, but you're yep. probably, like if you work on planes, if you work on rockets, this stuff matters. But it's probably not gonna matter for you guys. <clears throat> and when we started Reddit, um, we were naive about some of these big issues. Like I said, it, it seemed like a homework problem. And, and we had this mentality uh, in the early days, and we still do, largely, um, that we're not gonna take things down. Mm. We wanted to build a place that's real. And, and the, the, the starting uh, kind of motivation of Reddit is everybody's lying to me. Marketing is bullshit. Um, Media is bullshit, advertising is bullshit, uh, nothing, everything's fake. We're gonna build a place that's real. And we're gonna let things stay online. And it's easy to say that when your values aren't being tested. Right. We didn't have uh, any hate speech. We didn't have any bullying or harassment. We had tech news. And so I think it's easy to take a strong stand on that um, when your values aren't actually being tested. Now, 
as we've grown um, over the last 14 years, we celebrated our 14th birthday last week. Nice. Our values have been tested many times. And, and that's how you know they mean something. And we've had to make, in hindsight, uh, what seem like easy decisions, but at the time were very difficult decisions. Okay. Like, who do we allow on the platform? Who do we kick off the platform? What is the impact that our product is having on the world? And this is still where we spend a lot of time. How much time do you spend on the management side on those sorts of issues? Um, I don't know if I can give you a percentage, but it's a lot. Okay. Um, I work very closely with our policy team right. um, and our anti-evil team, which is the, the team that works to, to keep both our users and the platform safe, okay. um, wrestling with these issues. And so the way we think about it is we try to separate behavior from beliefs. Um, you're free on Reddit to have whatever beliefs you like, okay. um, but your behavior we care about and how you spread those beliefs. Um, and it gets difficult in, in the middle, right. in, 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 the, in the gray area. Some decisions are easy on both sides, but the ones in the middle, that's where we spend our time. Okay. Do you believe Reddit has a societal responsibility? I think society has a societal responsibility, and Reddit is a reflection of society. Got it. So what we try to do is make sure, for example, that any viewpoint on Reddit is in, uh, the volume of that viewpoint is in proportion to the number of people who have that viewpoint. Okay. So as, as, a, as a tech company, or the aspect of our company that is, is technology, um, this means making sure um, our systems, our voting systems are uh, not compromised, are fair, that our users or bots or even foreign governments aren't manipulating Reddit successfully. Um, that's have there been attempts by foreign governments to manipulate Reddit? There have been attempts, cool. um, but they've been largely unsuccessful. And the reason for that is, is because our users are our first line of defense, right? Our, our communities uh, have rules, mm -hmm. they have standards, they have values, um, and every piece of content has voting up and down. Right. And so our first line of defense is our users who can downvote um, things that they're suspicious of. And as I mentioned before, kind of the founding ethos of Reddit was skepticism. Right. And so when we're talking about integrity of news and that's mm -hmm. in, in, in that topic, um, our users actually are very effective at um, keeping things relatively balanced. Got it. Now, of course, as, as a tech company, um, we play a role in that as well. And I think we do, to answer your question directly, I think we do have an obligation to do the best we can there. Okay. All right, let's take a step back from, from the, the Reddit bed, and let's go back to the tech, because I know there's some engineers here. And, and by the way, you're, feel free to ask questions using Slido. Uh, details are, are pretty easily available, but feel free to ask questions, and, and I may be able to sort of jump into some of them. But going back to the programming side, you know, what are the kind of insights and, and lessons that you've learned from the programming world that you can translate into the management? You know, now that you're a big boss, how does that, how does mm -hmm. that work for you? I think one of the challenges as a programmer is you, you can, in a couple of months or a year, um, learn a language. Um, and, and you know you can get to the point where you can, f for the most part, write just about anything. Yep. But I do think there is a, um, it's, it's also easy uh, to spend an infinite amount of time working on something, waiting until it's perfect. Right. Right? Like, like any, like any uh, writer or artist would, keep refining and refining until you have this, this masterpiece. But something I, I tell uh, people at work often, both um, our engineering team and, and not, is users don't give a shit about your algorithm. Right. At some point, you have to ship, and you have to ship something that works. And it might not be pretty under the hood. And, and I think walking that line of, uh, does it work and is it good enough to put it out there, mm -hmm. um, is actually very difficult. And I think that's the difference between uh, a hacker and a professional engineer. And, and that, that lesson translates, I think, from engineering into business, into management. Right. I mean, you know, we, we often tell startups these days that users are pretty forgiving, right, of, of whatever actions you take. To your point about build it and ship it as soon as you can, um, how does Reddit, and you know, there's another question there because it's kind of related, but how, how does Reddit and, and your team work based on all these insights that you're gathering, based on you know, user feedback. And I mean, Reddit users are obviously really vocal. Mm -hmm. how, how does your team handle that, and how do you decide? Yeah, I, I think making product decisions, this is true at any company. And, and it's funny, Reddit, so when I came back to the company in, in 2015, um, our data, um, our like product data, our research data was in the Stone Ages. Um, only in the last year has Reddit uh, collected as many events 
uh, per day in our database that, um, that Hipmunk did. Wow. And Hipmunk was a 3,000 DAU company. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's, that's Stone so, Age. And so deciding what to build um, requires, uh, I think, three inputs. And each are equally important. And if you overlie on one, you'll get in trouble. So the first is, what does the data tell you? <clears throat> what are the users doing? And I th companies, I, I, th I think, are often kind of bipolar here. They, they're either, they don't have any data, so that's, they get a zero on that column, or they have some data, and, and, and they can't get their head out of it. Mm. And, and it's, but I think it's only one third. The, the second third is, uh, what are your users asking for? Again, um, some finesse required here. If it's, if it's zero or, or everything, you're in trouble. What are users asking for? And so you have to go um, one step beyond and say that if they're asking for this feature, what is the problem they're trying to solve, and do we have a better way? And finally, the third is your intuition. Mm -hmm. like what, 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 do, what do you think should be built? Um, if your product has um, any success or users, uh, that, that's, I think, a, a validating moment for uh, you as a, as a product leader and your team to trust your gut. Right. And so I think the, the challenge is, is weighing all of these things. And so for us, yes, we have a vocal user base, which is great. Um, yes, we're also users, and so we, we look to our intuition there a little bit, but we also look at the data. One of the most important lessons I learned um, at Hipmunk mm -hmm. is I unlearned a bad habit I developed at Reddit. Our product strategy for Reddit uh, the first time was we're going to build things that I like because I am not unique. There are millions of people just like me, and if, and if we build something that I like, millions of people will also like it. <clears throat> okay? That worked. And then we had a website that was used by 20-something tech dudes in the United States. <clears throat> it turns out there are millions of people just like me, <laughs> but there are not hundreds of millions or billions of people just like me. Right. And so at Hipmunk, we had to learn this lesson very painfully that we are not our customer. Um, we thought we were building a product for people who travel a lot and book their own travel. Turns out that's actually a small market. Um, people who travel a lot book through corporate travel agencies. Right. And people who book their own travel actually only travel a couple times a year. So we built a product for us, not realizing that uh, we are actually not our target market. So there we had to learn empathy for our users. What do business travelers actually need, and what do consumer travelers actually need? Long story short, we sold to a large um, corporate travel agency. Okay. Cop out. <laughs> that, yeah, okay. We'll, we'll forgive you for that. Um, we've, we've got time for one or two questions, but um, how do we you know, take the lessons of Reddit and apply it to reducing political segregation and increasing acceptance? One of the questions from the, um, from the audience. Yeah, we are going through, I think, worldwide. Um, but certainly in the US and, and here in Europe, challenging political times mm -hmm. where we've become more, uh, more divided than ever over the last, let's call it the last decade. And one of the things that we think is important on Reddit, we, we look at some of the challenges our, our peers have been facing around uh, misinformation mm -hmm. and echo chambers. And <clears throat> we, 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 try to, we, we think, like, how can we avoid those same challenges? One of the things that works well about Reddit is everything is open. Right. Right, so Reddit has communities for the entire political spectrum, mm -hmm. right? the far left, the far right, and everything in between. And, and, and cats. And cats, that's the in between. And <clears throat> what's nice about Reddit is you cannot exist on the extreme end of the political spectrum and not know what's going on on the other side. In fact, they actually kind of come together because they're always antagonizing each other. And so um, while that's annoying as a user and can be challenging for us as a company, I do think that forced perspective sharing right. uh, is really important. Okay. And so that's something, as, as we look to the future, um, how do we preserve that? Right. Um, because uh, if, if you live in a bubble and you think, this is my world and there's n everybody's like me and anybody who's not like me is crazy, um, that's how we got into this mess. Okay. And so seeing if we can break that, I think, is very important. Okay. Um, I always want to end on a, on a positive note, but you know, what, what's the? Uh, what, is there one subreddit that comes to mind that you think has a has had a positive impact or inspiring impact on the world? Oh my gosh, there are there are so many. Um, let me give you a, a couple examples. Um, 
One is one of my personal favorite communities called mm -hmm. Wholesome Memes. Okay. Uh, wholesome Memes is as the name sounds. It's memes, but they're wholesome. Um, <clears throat> it just makes me feel good. It was created, um, I believe, uh, at the end of 2016, after okay. the election. It was our fastest growing community of 2017. And, and, and I think I, like users, wanted a place where we can just feel good and not have to just be angry all the time right. about what's going on in politics. Like, there's time for that, but sometimes <laughs> we just want to feel good um, about the world. True. Um, another one is uh, skincare addiction. Okay. So skincare addiction is a community for people, again, as the name implies, who are really into skincare. Um, maybe not addicted to it, maybe addicted to it, um, but it's people sharing tips okay. um, and how-tos and showing off uh, progress pictures. I cleared up my acne, for example. Here's how I did it. Um, I met a woman a couple of years ago. Um, I had originally just thought this community was a, a, a beauty community. Okay. And I was like, okay, neat. Like, there's beauty on Reddit. But it wasn't a community where I spent any time. Um, and I, I met a woman who told me that that community actually saved her life. Oh. She had uh, bad acne mm -hmm. and was embarrassed about it, and it was basically ruining her life. She was afraid to go out. She didn't like being around other people, and this was really weighing on her. And she found support in this community um, and learned um, techniques that helped her clear her skin up. Right. And actually credits that support with the reason she's still here. And, 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 and when she told me that story, it was not the story I was expecting to hear when we started talking about skincare addiction. And so um, I, 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 I tell that story as an example where, of the, the power of community, mm -hmm. where um, I think communities, large and small, around seemingly uh, what things that might seem at first like hobbies can actually have a, a depthness and a richness to them that is, right. that is very powerful. And so our mission at Reddit is to bring that sense of community and belonging to everybody in the world. So that wasn't your mission when you started, right? Like when you, when you started Reddit, that wasn't the mission. At what point did that become the mission? Great question. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, our mission when we started was to, for to help people find new and interesting things online. <clears throat> and everything interesting about Reddit was created by our users. Mm -hmm. And so in the very beginning, um, we wanted, we wanted the community feel of Slashdot. Right. It was, a, it was a news website for nerds. Oh, we're yeah. and, but there was a richness in the community there of, of jokes and culture that, that mm. was really cool. So we wanted that. But um, what we hadn't done in the early days was elevate that. Right. That, that this is not just a fun thing, but actually a really important thing. Mm. And so sometimes I think of our jobs at Reddit as not as engineers or product people, but as sociologists. And we're studying this, this living organism, understanding why it's growing and why it's working and why it's important to people. Because I often wonder, why is Reddit still alive? If there was a, a checklist of things a company could do to kill itself, <laughs> we were methodically working our way down that list. Check. Be in yep. the press for all the reasons. Check. Have no business model. Um, have uh, zero to negative employee morale. Check. Um, we were masterful. And uh, both founders leave, check. Um, <clears throat> and, and yet, during our darkest days, we were growing. Hmm. And, and that's, by the way, what product market fit looks like. It's when you're trying to kill your company and it keeps growing. Preach so, it. Like, seriously, preach that. That is like, yes. yeah. Um, at, at Hitmonk, it took us five years. We never had product market fit. Hmm. Um, if we turned our back on it, zero users. So um, I'm very fortunate that we uh, I feel very fortunate that we built something that our users then elevated into something incredible. Mm -hmm. um, and as sociologists, we have, I think, now understand why it's incredible and can right. push it in the right direction. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we had to learn that more than, um, you know, more than design it. Okay. So switching tack a little bit, I think you know, we both started our, our first companies out of college, the hell we were probably in college. What, um, what's your advice for, for you know, and this is one of the questions again, what's your advice for, want to, or for entrepreneurs, to be entrepreneurs, um, or entrepreneurs to be, that are, they consider themselves stuck in a corporate job or rut? What's your advice for them? Ah. And let's, you, let's, let's get two answers, one for engineers and one for non-engineers. Sure. Um, I think my, my first answer, well, if you're an engineer, 
you are in demand. You can leave your job, and you will not be able to cross the street without getting another job offer. <clears throat> so you've got it easy. Business people, a little harder. Okay. Um, you Take might it. have to walk around the block a couple of times. <laughs> <clears throat> Take notes, y'all. Take notes. My advice is always be learning. So whether you're at a corporate job or starting your own thing or in school, first of all, don't try to do all three at the same time. Choose one, put your heart into it, and do it until you've stopped learning. Mm -hmm. And then make a change. I think there is, um, I often meet people who are wrestling, like trying to get the timing right, trying to get the market right. Just do it, make the change. Uh, for what it's worth, my style, and you can see this in Reddit's product, so take my, weight, my advice accordingly, is to kind of dive in the deep end, see what the problems are, and then start solving them. How, what do you, what, how do you define diving in the deep end? What does that really mean? Um, in this particular question? In this particular question. Leave your job and apply to a startup. Leave your job and start a startup. Okay. Like, get the, get the wheels going. Put some pressure on yourself. Yep. Create, some, create some pressure with your family. Um, create some fear of failure. I find that very motivating. Um, you know, get, uh, that, take that first step. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's easy to, to stress about it and to lie awake at night wondering, well, what if I did this? Oh, the, the door is closed. I wish I had done it back then. Those, those are not helpful thoughts. Okay. Um, so uh, if your startup's not doing well, maybe start a different one. Maybe sell the company um, if, if you're in that position. I, I, I just think if you feel stuck, then change it. Right. But, okay, I'm rambling, but if I were to summarize mm -hmm. in one sentence, that would be my sentence. Okay. What's the first thing, not like, you know, everyone's talking about being an entrepreneur now. What, what is that first thing? What is that first step they should actually take when they say, right, I've, I've started this company. What's that first step, first action? Ah. Talk to users, build something. Uh, talking to customers is, is, is always great. Um, YC's uh, motto, Y Combinator's motto, our first investor, was make something people want. Right. I think that's very good advice. Make something people want. Um, if you have to, make something you want. That's a good start, mm -hmm. but as I said before, uh, try to be realistic about are you special or are you uh, rep actually representing a large market. Right. Um, but if you want to know what people want, ask them. But then follow that other advice uh, that I tried to give, which is don't build the feature they're asking for, solve the problem they have. Right. Yeah, standard advice. Standard advice. Okay, cool. By the way, YC is not the only place to get that advice. Tech Stars <laughs> also does that. I have to say that. Um, right, so we've got time for two quick fire questions. Ch most challenging bit about keeping Reddit's openness? Um, 30 seconds, go. Yeah, I think the most challenging thing about keeping Reddit openness is, is the difference between what I would my, my own morality, yep. things that I want to see or don't want to see, and what's right for our platform in the world. Right. And so balancing my personal politics and desires and ethics with um, what's best for the platform. Okay. That's, I think that's very challenging. Okay. Um, and in terms, you know, this is actually a follow-up question, which is putting the Donald into quarantine. What's the response been like internally for your team? Um, <clears throat> internally, uh, this was a decision that had, I think, a lot of momentum behind it. Yep. Um, for us, the debate was, how do we execute this? Because right. this was, quarantining is, is basically a word we use for uh, an umbrella of sanctions that we might apply to a community. Right. Um, and, and we did this last week, actually, right before I came to Europe, which okay. was not a coincidence, but... Um, or which was a coincidence, but maybe fortunate. Um, and, and here we're basically sending a warning to that community, mm. which is uh, we have a content policy and we expect you to abide by it. Um, what we had found in that particular example is the moderators were actioning content that the users were reporting, but the users weren't reporting uh, troublesome content. Right. And as I was saying before, we do rely on our users to find Stop troublesome content, please. downvote it, report it. So, um, what we wanted to do is send a message to that community that we're not banning you, but you need to elevate um, the, the moderation of Got that it. community. Okay. And I, th I see the timer has just, been, just gone up, actually, so we have a little bit more time. Um, well, so what, what's, you know, if, if okay, let, let's, let's do it in reverse order. Um, if you had to rename Reddit today, what would you call it? If I had to rename Reddit today, um, so, when we were, the, the first thing that Alexis and I were doing 
uh, when we decided to start this company was choose the name. And so on our list of names was um, Octopop, um, Snoo. 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 Okay, the answer is Snoo. Okay, the AOM as, as in little... what's Snoo? Right. Um, Snoo is now the name of our mascot. Right. Um, we had a list of about 15 names. Reddit was at the bottom. I hated it. Um, <laughs> Uh, we, we liked names that had read in, and I forget all the other read names. Um, Alexis uh, really liked the name Reddit uh, because people would say, I read it on Reddit. Um, he was, long before anybody said it, he said it. <laughs> and, and I was against it, and then I thought the spelling of it was horrible, um, and then we bought it, and I was angry because like, nobody would ever be able to spell this name, um, but it was the best name we had. And actually, our, um, <clears throat> our plan when we launched the site was, and this was Paul Graham's advice, our first investor, was, okay, well, build the site, and when you have enough money to get a real name, you should do so. Okay. Um, but So you got acquired, you had enough money, and you still never made that. Reddit, we grew into Reddit. Okay, um, people started saying I read it on Reddit. I think Alexis was right the whole time. That makes so, sense. Um, every once in a while, like I said, trust your gut, trust your co-founder, and, and go with it. And that is the best advice you could actually give to first-time founders. Exactly. Trust your gut, trust your co-founder. Perfect. Well, Steve, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you for oh, coming on board. all mine. Thank you, everybody. All right. We'll see you guys later. Amazing. Thanks, Good stuff.